to bed. Things get back, get ready to go back, and well, you've been busy all summer. And it's <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> always like. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So we just have a makeup day. Every year we have a legal conference We're good. for all the principals okay. and like. So. Okay. <coughs> Terrific. I'd like to call a meeting to order of the uh, City of Monona Plan Commission, Monday, August 13th, 2018. Should call the roll. Chair Moore. Here. Mr. Dorschel. Here. Ms. Fox. Here. Mr. Holmquist. Here. Ms. Thomas. Here. Mr. Hamburg. Here. Alder Spade and Mr. Stein are excused. Okay. Thank you. Is there approval? Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from July twenty third, two thousand eighteen? Move approval. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any changes, additions, deletions to the minutes from the twenty third? Nothing. Okay. And that being the case, all those in favor say aye. 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 The minutes are approved. I have no uh, appearances. Uh, in front of me, we have no unfinished business, so we'll move right to new business. Number 6A, public hearing on request by the Country Inn and Suites presented by architect William A. Morris for approval of a zoning permit for a canopy addition to the front entrance of the hotel at 400 River Place. Case number 2-002-2018. Would you like to come up to the podium? Please start by telling us who you are and uh, again, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for the opportunity, everyone. My name is William Morris, 5313, 87th place, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. And I'm here this evening. Uh, we visited earlier this year uh, with the hotel uh, that was noted here in the reading at 400 River Place, um, in which the brand is really looking to try to, I think, improve uh, kind of the guest stay with arrivals and departures, primarily in, in clement weather more than anything else. Um, so I think that evening we kind of walked through the process a little bit. I think you gave us some recommendations that so we went back to the brand primarily um, and then the owner. Um, I think we came up with uh, a concept to bring the theme of the building more in keeping with the canopy by bringing the masonry out that, that is currently on the building and the pitched roofs and some uh, gable ends and things of that nature to kind of keep the theme going with the proposed new canopy. And so I thank you for your consideration and ask for your support tonight. Thank you. And I have any, ask, I'll answer any questions that I can. Terrific. Well, stay right up to the, uh, the podium, if you will. And uh, in the meantime, is there anybody else here that wants to speak on the Country Inn and Suites? Okay, great. Uh, then I'd like to close the public hearing and uh, move to consideration of action. Sonia? Uh, a canopy addition for this hotel was last proposed in February. That came before the plan commission. The design at that time was very different and the plan commission required that the um, canopy match the existing ma building materials with the brick and sloped roof. So the revised plans are in front of you tonight. The recommendation is for approval. Okay. Terrific. Questions from the committee? We'll start at this end, Chris. Okay, if, if I could have the overhead projector, please. Material. Why yes. are we using the same siding as the rest of the building? We can absolutely. Well, we can certainly okay. we can certainly pull that horizontal lap siding down. Well, yes. For the look of the building, it, yeah. The thing is, this this is your front entrance, 
And I know when the building was originally done, I mean, a lot of attention was paid to the front entrance. This is very visible. I drove by it. It's very visible from the I, I just, I passed by it as yeah. I exited tonight. And, and, and you want it welcoming as much as we do. Yep. So my, my three suggestions were the soft fascia just to match the building. Okay. And, and what you have over here, the doors enclosure, the siding, which would match the building. I'm sorry that nobody can really see this well, but you can see it on the... Yeah, it, it's a, it is a vinyl type horizontal lap. Yeah, yes. But, but it, it's the same look. And then a mini me version of this on the end. Oh. So a small one with spandrel glass, or if you don't have spandrel glass. How about, a, how about a five? That's kind of a, that's a, yeah. uh, that's a synthetic, like a five Absolutely. pond. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. But, but if you look at the front of your building, it, it planed it up a lot. Sure. So for me, one suggestion would just be to get a mini me of that in here just for looks. Okay. The, the siding and the overhang that would really match the architecture of your building. Yeah. And, and again, uh, you know what, the, the uh, you know, we had to work uh, with the architect for the brand a little bit. Sure. Um, they kind of. That, that stuff all fits right in. With it, the does. Brand. it does. It does. Uh, architecture. Absolutely. Building. No, no. And and in in like fact, I have to believe, to be honest with you, I'll, I'll be very honest, I think that the lap siding would probably be a little bit less costly in my mind. I'm not the builder, Probably. but than an EFIS system. But it won't look like it's just intact on it. Right. Okay. So that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Great. Kathy? I'm fine. Okay. Brian. Um, I had the same items. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if this pitch matches the pitch of the lower entrance already. Uh, on the little mansard, it's probably a little lower pitch. Yes, that's a little steeper, I think, on the on the little mansard. Yes, the concern that they had, I'll be honest, the, the biggest concern or the discussion that we had was that, you know, from the in initial design, remember how it was very flat, and I won't deny there was, um, that anyone looking out the particular windows adjacent, yeah, look, yeah, look into a roof structure, and they're trying to, not well, those are actually in the lobby. So, because I went inside, these are actually, because that lobby is actually a very tall space, they're actually concerned about the one over here, okay. on this far end, and really here. Whereas it climbs more, it just simply Cuts it makes it more obscure, or they're really looking at a roof shingle type situation, yes. So I think it's a, it's a good compromise, and it's pulled all the other details, I agree. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Okay. Susan? Yeah, I, I had the same thought. I'm glad you're, I think the siding would look a lot better. I mean, that was what I was thinking too. Um, but yeah, thank you for going back and revisiting it. I, I would think your people would be pleased too, because I uh, just they think are. It, it looks so much better. They yeah, are. Really we went back and forth. I won't deny we yeah. went back and forth yeah. with the brand architect down south. And you know what? Um, I, he actually did send me an email. I said, you know what, Bill? This is great. Let's it be let's, a prototype. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Don't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. With the changes, I think it looks fine. Okay. I just have one question, having uh, not been here for the initial presentation. Uh, is that a, actually a drive-through entrance? Yes, it's you'll be able to. Yes, you'll actually to be able to pull up, park your car, unload your luggage, and then proceed on through. Okay, so the visual that I'm seeing of the curb uh, there um, on either side that doesn't look doesn't look like it's it, from the angle. It's not clear to me that it's sufficiently wide although the drawings show it in the picture it's a little bit deceiving yes yeah. um, so that that'll be wide enough for the car yes yeah. okay Perfect. Um, with all that being said unless we have any other questions would anybody like to make a motion to approve uh, move approval condition one was written by staff condition two that window spandrel glass or that other thing you mentioned yeah, the little fight pond fight uh, pond yep window sp spandrel glass or fight pond be um, used on the gable end uh, soft and fascia to match the existing building and siding to match the existing building and all those final approvals by staff Terrific. We have a motion. Do I have a second? We have a second from Brian. Yes. Discussion. So in other words, you need to just send a sketch back so that somebody can look at it, but you don't have to come back here. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I will send it to you. Yes, please. Not a problem. Before Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's my last okay. day. <laughs> Anything else? Now that we have a motion. Are you going on forward? vacation Wednesday? Permanent yes. vacation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Permanent vacation? Yes. Oh. She's got a new job. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unless there are any other comments, close the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 
Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. I should point out, uh, as, as Sonia did in her email to us, that um, the rest of the items on tonight's agenda, we have both a public hearing and a consideration of action um, to follow, um, which is to say that um, we'll proceed as uh, for that consideration. And, and if we don't have a motion or uncomfortable in any way, we can always table it to another meeting because we're trying to pack a lot in this evening. So. That being said, no, number item 6C, public hearing on request by Feral Equipment and Supply for approval of a zoning permit, site plans, and structural elevations for a new outdoor storage and staging area at 6809 Mangrove Lane, case number 2-015-2018. We have someone presenting on behalf of, okay, terrific. Again, please state your name and address, of course. My name is Eric Greibel, uh, 6809 Mangrove Lane, Fairly Equipment. Um, so what we're asking for is uh, to add an additional storage yard into the back of our property that we have currently at 6809. Um, it's behind our building, uh, just additional uh, extra storage of, I guess, surplus products that we have that we'd have for outdoor storage. I'm confused. Are you asking for permission or is it already done? So we're going through the process of getting, we have everything, all the permits and everything done. We're just, I guess, the, we're planning on the city approvals where we Has the through. project been done? No. So, well, let's say it, it's partially, it had been started and worked on. Um, we, when we originally started the project, there was uh, some questions that we had with what the wall, uh, was with a permit and what, uh, how much uh, square foot that we had to cover over to get a permit for um, ground excavation. So anything else that you would like to say about your proposal? Um, so the biggest thing is, you know, we're trying to, uh, we had moved some of the back wall uh, that we existing have already. We changed uh, the back corner design of it to help with uh, more structural and aesthetic looks to it than what we had currently just uh, with the height of it. So we, we knocked it down a couple blocks to help with that end of it. Um, we've looked into with an engineer to re redesign the bio bed uh, where the overflow would come in, the drainage would come into the, the north end, end of the property um, for collection of any stormwater runoff. Okay. And is there anyone else uh, that would like to speak? on this particular item, the public hearing portion. Uh, were you motioning to someone? Oh. Uh, John, do you want to say anything? Or? Okay. Could you just describe what the plans are for fencing? Yeah, so uh, we'd have an additional uh, eight foot fencing. What we have right now is a chain link fencing that surrounds our storage yard currently. Uh, we'd ask that we could uh, do the same thing around the entire property. Uh, on the west side, uh, we'd, so everything else would have the slotted green slots that we'd have matching to current. Uh, but on the, on the west side, uh, the upper part where the wall would wrap around the west and the south, south wall, uh, we ask that if we could just leave it open chain. Uh, biggest reason we have is it's, one, it's going to be structurally, it'll be high enough that visually you can't have a view in. But what we're having on our current property is with uh, the slotted fence, it's actually almost creating like a sail. And we've had issues where the uh, pipes have already br broken off and had to be fixed already just because the wind's blowing from the west uh, across the open field. Um, if there is uh, no other comments uh, at the public hearing portion, I'd like to close the public hearing and uh, move to item D on this, a consideration of action on the request by Feral Equipment and Supply for approval of a zoning permit, site plans, and structural elevations for a new outdoor storage and staging area at 6809 Mangrove, case number 2015-2018. Sonia? So this project um, construction has already started. It is a change in land use and substantial construction or alteration to the property that requires approval of a zoning permit by the plan commission. So we're here tonight trying to get this all approved after the fact, um, including their stormwater permits. Um, our consulting engineer, Darren Pope from Veerbicker, provided a review of site layout 
grading, stormwater erosion control, and his review was included in the packet, and he's also here to provide comments. A lot of his comments are captured in the recommended conditions of approval. Um, I did not include a condition of approval regarding any aesthetic conditions with the wall um, or fencing, but the plan commission may discuss that and incorporate any conditions as needed. Um, and there was also a question with something that's labeled on one of the site plans <clears throat> on the north part of the new storage lot right behind the office building there is a note for a public sanitary sewer easement and we checked our public utilities gis information and found that there are currently no utilities underneath that area um, the public works staff is out of the office, so we were unable to confirm that or if there were any plans in the future. Um, but it's also not something that showed up on the CSM, so we would recommend that you confirm with Beerencott, your surveyor, mm -hmm. to determine if there actually is an easement there or why it was included on the plans. Okay. Uh, and Darren Pope could uh, give yes. his review at this point. Yeah, would you like to come up, Darren? So could you, um, could you, sorry, could you state your name again? Sure, yeah. sure. I'm Darren Pope uh, with uh, working with Beer Bicker. Uh, we're engineer, consulting engineers for the city and review all the site plans uh, that come to the Thank you. plan commission. And uh, so we, I received a uh, set of plans uh, on July 20th. It was dated July 20th um, for the um, develop or redevelopment of the lot behind Fair Equipment Supply. And uh, as uh, Eric had described, they, uh, the plans showed a, a large graveled storage area there. Um, previously, before anything was done on the site, it was vacant. So it was just a prairie vacant area. Um, so no one pervious was on, was on the site. So it was, it's considered to be new development because there was nothing there that existed before. Um, so that is a, there's a set of standards for stormwater management that have to follow for new development. Most of the projects that come here before Plant Commission are redevelopment, so you have some standards that aren't, are a little bit different. Um, one of the main things is that you have uh, requirements for uh, uh, sediment reduction of 80%. Uh, with redevelopment, it's only 40. And then also there's a requirement for infiltration to happen, uh, where you have to infiltrate 90% uh, of what was previously infiltrated. Um, the plans uh, showed a bioretention basin in the corner to uh, address the sediment control. Um, there's also peak rate control, so for the runoff, it has to be maintained for certain storm events, um, so it doesn't exceed runoff. Um, and then also for um, the sediment control, oil and grease, and then infiltration. Um, soil borings were done on the site, and it showed that the soil borings had an infiltration rate of half an inch per hour, which is um, less or lower infiltration rate than what the ordinance requires to, to provide that 90%. Uh, so the applicant did the best they could with the soils that were there, and I think they, their calculations show that they exceeded, exceeded 60 or achieved 60% uh, infiltration. Um, but the city's ordinance actually exempts them from having to do the, meet that 90% infiltration. Um, I had some comments um, on the first round of plans. There was an area of grading that was less than a percent, which I recommended they increase that to get better drainage. Uh, since it is all going to be gravel uh, um, to reduce the likelihood of ponding. Um, um, and I guess um, I don't know if I need to go into a lot of the details of my comments because I've received uh, another set of plans uh, and I've had discussions with Will at D'Onofrio and um, went kind of back and forth with him on, on my comments and uh, they were able to set uh, to get a revised set of plans in stormwater management report um, that pretty much met or did did address all the comments that I had at this point um, and I think you, Sonia I had given you a, a set of, of those plans mm -hmm. um, so my only uh, I guess concerns now would be that that they have a, um, a stormwater uh, maintenance agreement for the existing feral site. And I presume this is all gonna be one site through CSM process. 
So I'd recommend that they would uh, amend that stormwater maintenance report for the facilities that they are, um, the new bioretention area that they're going to have. And then also for the city has a policy of requiring uh, the uh, maintenance of the retaining wall that they're proposing that's over four feet of height to that, to have that incorporated into the maintenance agreement as well. And a template of that maintenance agreement was given to D'Onofrio and they um, did uh, um, uh, make edits to that ag agreement. So I think that that's in good shape at this point and could be recorded. So, Darren, can you comment on your review for the structural stability of the wall too? Sure, yeah, and then we also received plans for the retaining wall. Um, in that, um, my first review of it back in May, um, there were a few different things that were, well, they, they didn't have an analysis for uh, bearing capacity failure of the wall. So I requested that they do that. Um, and then they were a little bit vague about what um, the soil backfill material was going to be. Um, they didn't include any soil borings at that time. And since then, they, they did provide that information. They did complete the bearing capacity um, checks and uh, sent another set of plans and calculations to me. Um, and I reviewed those, and uh, um, they met all the comments that I had before on that. So I don't have any concerns with their, their current design for the retaining wall. Uh, I guess one thing, a couple comments though, I guess that I remain is that um, the retaining wall was built within maybe a foot of the property line. And we'd normally recommend that they give themselves more space than that so that you can maintain the wall. Uh, so our recommendation was that they um, seek to get some uh, maintenance agreements from their adjacent neighbors uh, that allows them to access their property to do maintenance on, on the retaining wall. Thank you. Any questions from, from the committee? Chris? Kathy? Um, yeah. Uh, well, for Darren or, or for the applicant? Either. So I wanted to do the, uh, I wanted to do the applicant. I'm okay. fine with Darren. Okay. Why don't we take questions? Uh, uh, since you're up already, why don't you stay up there? Are there any oh. questions for Rebecca? No? No? Okay, then we'll take questions from the, uh, for the applicant. If you could come back up to the podium, sir. Thank you. Okay. Kathy? Um, we have enjoyed having Farrell and we've enjoyed working with you. But I, which makes it even more, I guess, troubling and disappointing to me where we are with this. I don't know who didn't realize that you had to come and get permission to do this, or who did the work, but they should have known. Because the, the thing that, I mean, there are a lot of things. That, I went out and looked at the site. Um, it really is sort of, it, sort of a mess out there right now. I looked at where the neighbors are and they have it mowed quite neatly. You have grass growing up there. The wall looks, how, how would you expect without getting permission from your neighbors to maintain a wall that's one foot within one foot of the property line? I mean, how, how do you do this? How, how do you, I mean, I think what we're trying to do out in that area, there are two new buildings that are going up out there, at least one, and they're investing in it to make it look better and this project doesn't do anything to contribute to that I would if I was moving in I I would not think that you were a good neighbor I'd look at that wall you're one foot up why should what if they don't give you permission how are you going to manage the wall I mean I I guess Chris I you're the resident expert on this I don't know if you have thoughts which part of what you said <laughs> I would agree I'm disappointed we're at this point right now. I think there's a lot of things that could have been made better in this and had we come we could have talked about them. Um, I'm not sure we'd have allowed a wall like that. This, well, is, a, this is the first time I've seen one like that used in this situation. Um, just so the rest of the plan commission understands what they are. Mm -hmm. These are the extra concrete when the ready mix company comes back and they've got extra concrete left in the drum they make these things they sell them really cheap because 
they've got nothing in them and otherwise they've got to dispose of the concrete. Um, they're not cast to be really perfectly plumb or square. And whoever built it did a heck of a job. I can't imagine stacking those things seven high and making the walls straight as it is. And it's not straight, but, it, but to do what they did was really good because they're not easy to work with. So do we have the engineer that certified it here tonight? Uh, no? He's not. Okay, I was just curious. I'm just curious that he did it. He, he did inspect it. Did he dig down and check it? Or how did he, how did he verify what's there? With uh, the grid, part? the bearing for the wall, all that stuff, the backfill, the drain tile. Um, so there were photos we had of, of the entire process. As it was we being built. As we were doing the whole thing. So we did have some that okay. we just had for ourselves so we can, uh, that was sending up with, uh, with the owner. Uh, so I did have some of those that I gave to Mike along the way. Um, Mike is? The, sorry, the, uh, the engineer for Cliff Engineering. Okay. Um, so so he was involved all the way along? Uh, no, uh, this is after, uh, sorry, after the... Who, who designed it originally then? Who decided what grid to put in and all that? Um, well, when we had uh, our builder go in, that they said that we should make sure we have uh, the geo grid and the, the fabric, and so they were the ones that had everything in there. Okay. So just what they felt it needed? Yeah, I'd, I'm not okay. really sure what, if they had looked into that. I'm, I'm not sure we would have allowed that much wall that close to the property line. I'm Act, I'm quite sure we wouldn't have. There's a three and a half million dollar project going up right next to you and DSI is right next to them. Um, and you remember the wall you put in to be able, when we talked about this area, this is the area of special concern. And we said, you know, we'd love to have you, you know, we, we do, we're, we're thrilled you're here. But we said towards that presentation, we need to put something a little nicer. And you put a gorgeous uh, precast fence in there. I'm not sure if you precast or cast on site, it's beautiful. Um, but now you're, you're suggesting that the most you want to do is put the chain link with slats in it in there, which is a very industrial look, but it's not the look of those buildings. So I, I'm not I, sure that that's I think perfect the, there. So back to your comment about the, the land and having some of the overgrowth, um, anything that was on ours, I mean, we were told to please. Uh, oh, I'm sure you got a cease and desist so, so order. I, we didn't want somebody, to, I mean, even yeah. any type of maintenance at this point, um, obviously that would all be well maintained. Like we would be able to do clear up and make sure all of that, that, that would not be seen uh, or around the edge of. Um, I think with uh, the, ch the chain link, that, that was our thought with the being industrial, again, it's all landlocked inside the internal of uh, surrounding buildings. So that's kind of where we had kind of thought. But, uh, you're, but you're back, I mean, where you're proposing this fence is right up against a couple multi-million dollar properties. Mm -hmm. That's not, I mean, that's what they see. Mm -hmm. That was the whole point of maybe we could put this on. And if there's we, a parking lot in it. I mean, everybody goes in and sees that stuff in there. Yeah. We, Whatever we call it, overhead projector, what, what do you call it? Document camera. Document camera, thank you. Thank you. We're kind of in a conundrum right now, I think, for, for what's there, because it's certainly not something we'd have looked at and approved. So I went out there and I looked at it. There is no wall here. So my thought was that that could be turned into a landscape area and get, you could have your friends but have some landscaping in front of it to try to buffer it from those businesses. And here is that pond. This wall's not built yet, am I correct? Correct. Is this wall in there or is it, where is it? Uh, yes, yeah, so that or one. Or is it out here right now or? Uh, nope, it's just where that uh, lower part on the south side. Correct, there. here? Correct. Okay, yes. so that's the wall that's in right now. Yep. Okay, so I'm not sure. And I, I, do, I have a very strong question about that sanitary easement. I, if we have a sanitary easement there, we surely wouldn't allow a wall to be built on top of a sanitary easement. And, and I don't know what the intention is with it. If it's um, a really deep pipe, that would be bad. If it's a really shallow pipe, you probably, well, you wouldn't want that one wall directly on it and then a uh, bio basin right on top of it. So it would really be good to know about what the plans are for that sanitary sewer easement. Uh, and Darren, you have no idea, correct? I didn't see that in the Nopio's plans, and, but they, they did appear on the Sony and I were just looking at it before the it's not noted on the CSM. Then. No, but it's it's noted on here and it's noted very specifically as a yeah. twelve foot easement, which we we um, we have to know about that before we, we approve something over the top of it. Is it there? Is it what the what's the intent of it? Um, so anyhow, going back to my thoughts, um, this is it's not a very attractive wall. I, I just, I, I don't know what to do about it. It's not, I mean, it's 
the, blo the, blo the blocks are meant for, we use them in a quarry. We put up bins with them. They use mm -hmm. them around uh, when you need to feed a crusher and walls and stuff. They're not really uh, for this application. We have it. And I, I'm trying to sit here and figure out how we can get by with it. So for me, this is a really easy area to buffer and put some landscaping, some trees in. For me, down here would certainly be a prime place for a couple trees just to soften everything up. This is still a 10 foot high wall right at the corner. Another issue I look at is this mound of dirt and this mound of dirt were clearly just pushed there by this owner when they built this last addition in that parking lot. But with the way the wall is now and coming up out of the ground, I can't see my finger on that, you've really encumbered this land because the owner can no longer take that dirt back out because he'd undermine that wall. Um, so on both these sites, I'm not sure how, how that owner feels about it, but I'm assuming your footing steps up with the grade, am I right? Correct. Yeah, so basically the mound of dirt he threw here and here, and I, this used to whole thing be a mound of dirt and stuff was shoved all around, so I'm sure you just bought this piece and worked with what you had, but I don't know if the owner of BD knows what's happening there. That, that's, that's a problem. So I, I don't have great answers. I, I think for me, softening it up with that landscape easement and, or not easement, a landscaped area where, where those buildings are and depending on what, if there's a wall here or not, or what can possibly happen. I, we re need to know about the sewer easement before we can really say, I'm sure there's things to be done there. I'm mostly worried about, and we talked about this when you were here in the beginning, the, the building over here and the building here, because that's the ones we said, yeah, we would love to have here, let's put in a storage yard, but let's make it nice towards those properties. And so those are the ones I worry about the most. Um, I don't believe we've allowed any storage yards in Monona without screening. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just a fence, it's gotta be fenced in to be graveled, but then also screening. So I'm not sure about this, not putting anything on the fence. I, I, that's been a pretty strong policy in Monona to have screen, if we're gonna allow storage yards to have screen yards. Mm -hmm. Something we should talk about. Um, I have a question. I don't, if none of the engineers are here, nobody can answer it for me. We, we have a stormwater engineer here. We do? D'Onofrio? Just off your Awesome. Okay. So in your soil boring, if, could you come, come up on for up a second? Come on up to the microphone, please. Unfortunately, we're on TV and nobody can hear you back there. <laughs> yep. So my 15 minutes. Why we're yeah. on TV, I have no idea. <laughs> um, so I understand in, in your um, soil analysis, you got the 0.5 inches per hour for, so I'm assuming you hit clays to get that? Uh, it's actually, a, it's considered a silty loam. Anything right. with a clay in it is not going to even get 0.5. Right. That's okay. just not That's even just, I was just a little yeah. confused because when I saw the stuff for the wall, it looked like a lot better material that would actually get permeability rates up in there, whereas here we're not getting them. And so my one question was, oh, it's on the sheet we have here. When you get into the bio basin here and you're putting the sand storage layer under it, if there's any possibilities of if it goes a little deeper, we can get into some soils that would give us a little better infiltration. Right, and that's always the goal, and that's right. where we get the test pits done to see what we have. So when the when the bio bed, and I've had this discussion with Eric, is that we have to get down to those right. those good soils that we met with the uh, with the test pits, and you know the. Sometimes the final grade of the bio bed is below what it is existing now. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we need to get five feet below proposed grade just to know what the bottom of that material is. And that's right. where we hit the, fi uh, the point five. And that was five foot below existing grade? Uh, the test pits were 10 foot below existing okay. grade, just to ensure that we're below right. the uh, proposed uh, layer, which is that layer you're referring yep. to is five foot below the surface of the bio. So my one suggestion would be when we're in there, assuming this bio basin goes in this location, boy, you can't see a thing, can you? What's happening here? Um, that if it's possible to go down a couple more feet, we could get into some of that soil and that, that would be helpful. Right, and that's... Because I know the property next door, which would be right over here, did hit stuff with infiltration rates that were okay. Yeah, and I believe that's a note in the detail in the full stormwater report. If you look at the bio okay. cross-sectional detail, it'll talk about um, excavating down to uh, okay. good soils. If, if yeah. it's there. Right, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was the only question I think I had for that. Um, that's that's it. I'm, I'd like somebody with greater epiphany than me to tell me where to go. Okay. 
Kathy, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, it, well, I, the question, one of the questions is, what happens if the, they don't get the easement on the wall? There, there have been walls built with virtually to, right to the property line, and, and ultimately it's their responsibility to maintain it. So if they don't have an easement, um, you bring a helicopter in. Well, to do what? <laughs> I, I mean, the only thing really they're going to do to maintain that would probably be to rebuild it if it goes down. I'm, I'm not sure what else they're going to be asked to do for it. I mean, they have a maintenance agreement and they'll need to access it. And then if I were them, I would try to get it now because if you ever got to go back in there and fix this wall, it will be difficult, but anything is possible. So is it possible to build a wall like that from one side? Sure. You have to move a lot, a lot more dirt probably, but you, you, can, you can do it. Okay. I, I like the idea of having a easement there, but I don't think that's any really easy thing to go do now after the fact. Okay. Brian. Um, so many of the questions I had have been brought up and I do have a concern about the, the north edge as well as that front part that Chris was talking about, the landscaping edge. Uh, the sight line from <coughs> the property to the north of Unroyal, and Here. I'm not sure how far that will be able to be seen and how dressed up that side is. Um, I think that's part of the concern uh, from from that angle. I, I have similar reactions to the, the block being used. I'm not sure um, I'm not sure we would have uh, gone along with using a block like that and I'm also sensitive to the, to the issue of like you're half into this thing. And part of me is looking at going, what would we hold if you were here and you had done nothing yet and you hadn't even purchased the property yet and this was an idea? We'd be saying, this needs to match existing stuff that's there. Um, with that said, there's also the <coughs> expectation that this is an industrial uh, area and I understand that. Torn with the materials, and uh, I'm not sure how we can prove it, given the, the level of information that we have, and some of the unknowns. The sanitary line, the maintenance agreement. Although I agree, maintenance of these probably pretty low to none. But when I look at the soils that are pushed up against the wall on two sides, and how that then impacts other properties and their ability to use their property um, is limited. So those are my concerns of right now. Susan? Yeah, well, I, th I think minimally there needs to be some kind of landscaping in that, I guess it's the northeast corner, the one that abuts the new veterinary clinic that's going in, um, just because it will be sort of visible, and even though that's kind of the back of their property. And it's, right now there's a dumpster there, I think, and the parking lot on, on the other lot. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it seems kind of a shame because the, the building itself is very nice looking and the cement wall that you have with the green mm -hmm. capstones and that, it, it's just, it's very attractive. And then this really is not. And it, um, I mean, if, if engineering wise it's stable, um, it doesn't look like it is when you look at it, but if it is, uh, you know, if, if that's the judgment. Um, so it wasn't clear to me on that north side, then the wall doesn't continue past where it is now, or it's just sort of started on that side, and then how? F yeah, so on the north the north wall, um, we had added that later on, uh, more with uh, the bio bed. And okay, yeah. Uh, just to have more of a, a set wall so we can keep the, the elevation and right. everything lower because just with the property next door, the neighbor's property, the, right. the parking lot, right. um, trying to keep that so we so can have a bio bed in there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think minimally, I guess there should be some landscaping there and, and possibly even along 
at the end of that parking lot, I mean, where you can, because you can see the piece of the wall kind of in there, and there's, it's just kind of junky looking right now. But, um, but that's partly on their lot as well, I guess. So I guess that that's my only comment is it, it would be nice if it, if it looked nicer, and if you could use some more of that fencing in some of those areas where it shows. Um, you're probably right that the back, well, I don't know, the, the east part, a lot about it's your own property, and then it's the south part that doesn't. That is that. So, is there any plan to? There's no plan to build any of like fencing in there. Either um, it's all on which side. Uh, this would be on the south. The south uh, part. Yeah. So the that, south that wall would also have uh, the the fencing up on that the top. That will have the fencing. Yeah. Okay. So we'd we'd okay, surround so the entire property yeah, with uh, be with better. fencing. Okay. Anything else? Griff? Uh, I would agree that it would be nice to have some landscaping to break up the continuity of the wall and to shield the property to the north. And I agree with a lot of the other comments that were made earlier. Now that you went all the way back there and sat down, can I ask you another question? Please? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was sitting here daydreaming on it, well, for a little bit. Is this wall here absolutely necessary? Or would you be able to adjust grades a little bit and accomplish this? Because basically, this is getting close to the existing grade. And I know you're trying to get your ponding area, but if we didn't have this wall next to that neighbor, it would be a lot easier to soften that up. That wall is not built. Um, your bottom's at like 81, this is 80, 82, 84, 86. So is there any way to massage? I know you, your outlet's gonna be your issue. Is there any way to do that without the wall? Because for this, what you're talking about for a wall, it's gonna look like one block stack next to one block stack right. the next one block. It's gonna look, basically it'd be a single row of blocks that are just butted end to end. To be right. able to create that bank back up for your bio basin. So, um, the block was used because that's what's being, you know, used on the property right now. Uh, the outlet structure is a concrete wall, uh, so that north. It looks like block. At least it's got the same. Line. Well, it will be. It will be a poured wall because it has. Uh, um, okay. Detailed designed yeah. outlets so in it's it. Which, not these blocks then. Right. It'll just okay. be a poured in place. Well, like a um, B notch or weirs or. So, uh, there'll be a. Um, Orifice? Round orifice, okay. yeah. A couple of those. Um, so I will say that the block wall on the north side is an integral part to contain, especially the higher volume storms. When we get to a 100 year storm, we don't want to have that going off of the property. But one Agreed. thing that did come to mind, and if I may just freely say an idea. If you don't, I will, an engineered, <laughs> the regular engineered modular block wall. Um, no, but I think if you like the look of something, there would definitely be enough room to pull that block back and, and, and put something okay. in front of it, like a decorative fencing wall or, mm -hmm. or, or the landscaping you mm -hmm. talk of. And, and, um, and the, I liked your idea of the landscaping on the one side, and I think uh, that would nicely fit with the banks of the bio bed, where uh, the okay. surface of the bottom of the bio bed is very critical in the types mm -hmm. of plants, but there's, there could be a little bit more variance of that on the banks of that. Uh, so that would cover the whole north line. Um, but I, I was just thinking it sounds like the concern is really the view from the north. Um, so I think Eric could come up with some ways to shield the look of that modular uh, plain wall with something else with whatever mm -hmm. idea. Modular, you mean the concrete block? Right, yeah. Or, or a different type of block. What, you know. I, and, and you're talking such a short, you're talking a really small, do you really even need a full 30 inches there? It's only deepest in the corner, and right. yeah, it rises up to nothing. It daylights it's, out it's to nothing. It's a minor wall, and yeah, that's what they'll small. see from the north. And yeah. they'll see that long before the other. So it's one area we have where we can make this a little more friendly to the neighbors to the north. Right, yeah, and because that's a poured outlet, uh, it could be anything that contains. Mm -hmm. It could be a poured wall all that's, along that's that expensive. north side. That's expensive. I mean, if we went to just... Uh, more of the modular block that you see for a lot of landscape walls or something, it's a lot more attractive to the neighbor. We could put something like that along there with some landscaping with it and that would, you don't need much of a wall there. 
From my uh, perspective, it needs it, add, it does provide a containment. But you don't need much of a wall. It, no. We need for containment, so we're That's talking, right. your tallest might be like this. That's right. And then go down to nothing, and those blocks, those blocks are the same height as this table, they're 30 inches. Right. So, so basically to have a bunch of those lined up by themselves would not be the greatest if you were the neighbor. And, and that way we would be able to soften the entire north side. We need to talk about the fencing and we could soften it there and the biggest obstacle left would be that sanitary sewer easement. Yeah. I don't know that we can solve the sanitary e sewer easement tonight without further information. I, we need to know. Did, your, your plans didn't find it anywhere? Yeah, um, we didn't have any information on it. Like it was mentioned, we use the information from uh, Baron Cott in terms of property. Okay. Um, property dim dot line dimensions and bearings. Yeah. Um, but okay. you know, I think with uh, you know con condition of resolving that issue. Well, you understand uh, too. You can't just generally put a retaining wall right on top of a sanitary sewer. Well, I'm also a, a registered surveyor. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it done. Okay. Uh, you know, it's the property owner's risk and the agreement yep. you talked about all, all in place. Sure. So I would not say it's a good idea, but I don't know what the intentions of this easement that's not either. showing up anymore. If it has any well, um, future use plan, if or I not. may, it's something that we could definitely right. dig into and resolve right. before we. I say we you're, would you're move good at that. You do that it. all the time. I think it's. I think it's um, a quick title search or up to the register of deeds. You absolutely know. right. Yep. So okay. I think it's a reasonable condition. Absolutely. Okay, and then since you are a surveyor and you're up here, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I know that. <laughs> no, no, that's just reminded me of a question I had here. Condition 7 calls for the combination of the two lots. Why are we requiring them to combine the two lots? Why, what reason do we have for making them? Because a lot of people own two lots and use them side by side, but want to maintain the independence of the lots if someday they want to sell it off, or what was the reason? Because it's not fronting on a road, was that yeah, the why? The reason that I required that is it's landlocked, and, okay. and that parcel right. did not exist previously. Okay. They created it by right. meets and bounds. Or then it would have yeah. to be attached. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. I think I'm done. If you need it again, yeah. I'm happy to come up. Yeah. So, if I may, you, you understand what we're talking about for that wall in the far north. Correct. By that basin. That's not, I assume that's not something you'd have an issue with trying to do something a little softer and nicer right yeah. on that. No, just I mean, that lip. It's a small wall, but just to make that a little nicer, some landscaping around there, the landscaping mm -hmm. on the north side, the. Uh, in the upper corner this corner here this is still a 10 foot oh, no, wall right side. here right Cor uh, correct I believe so that's but right. then you've got this and I assume that's because the wall was too high to stand in that corner so pulled it back to be able to get the thing to stand Cor uh, well I mean so it was all standing before um, we on the I, I meant long term uh, Possibly. I, I mean, I suspect that's what the calculation <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we, we brought it back um, so this is really wasted space this is down what would it it's about three, six, three so I think we got three, three, three blocks off of it, so it would have been yeah, uh, six and a half feet or whatever it is. So this is just so everybody understands, this is six feet, seven feet below this level. So it's basically like a little oasis. My thought, it says grass, and I assume you're going to put something like a no mow or something that you never have to touch going there and weed it once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But it would certainly be a nice place for some trees to when we talk about landscape this site. If we, you know, you could easily get three trees there, which are actually show well from that corner mm -hmm. and then some nice no mow or which is a little bit of maintenance you got to cut up burdock and thistle but eventually it really takes over mm -hmm. and that would take care of that corner and that would get some landscaping along here so 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 the very tip corner uh that's the part that's 10 foot deep um there, right it, it drops off yeah yeah really and quick the, into the that ground point. comes up quite a bit yes yeah, so directions. it's probably you know within five feet you're already up to five foot at height so so you could jump up there if you actually had access along that property. Uh, it would be <laughs> if you had a pretty good vertical, maybe. It's yeah, a, it's a tough. Yeah. So it's got to be something that's virtually no maintenance. Yeah. So for me, that's that's the fixes to try to maintain what's there and not have them tear it all out. It is the back of a building. It is below was an industrial area. Um, we happen to have some very nice buildings around it. We have Wyden's building, we have that BD, which was high tech building for a while. But if we can take care of the things we talked about, we could probably salvage it, I think. Well, and, and, your, and their building is attractive from the front. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's not, it's, it's it, you know, they've, I, they've done, you've done a nice job. Of yeah, and I think that's our biggest thing. I mean, we will just, maintain we this. It will, be ta it will be taken care of, and we will, I mean, we take pride in our building that's there, too, so we want to make sure it all looks nice and correct. Around. We, we need to talk about the fence. Yeah. I was just going to say, can I just um, get some clarity, Eric, just to confirm? I know the ho the horse was already partially out of the barn, which is to say, you already started this without coming before this correct um, commission. But um, have you stopped? Yes. At this point, yes. Nothing There's has not been a done. shovel going into the ground Absolutely now, no, and it's, it's hasn't been going into the ground no. and while no. you've been going through this process. Not at all, and that's why, like okay. what we were saying with the the plant overgrowth. Um, I mean, it doesn't look great. I, I agree. I think that that could, should have been taken care of, but we just did not want to touch anything, didn't want to move anything uh, until we had fought full approval of everything to keep moving forward at this point. Okay. Okay. Chris, do you want to talk about the fence? Well, the fence. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if you, I, the fence you built's gorgeous. I'm sure it cost you a bloody fortune, too. Um, <laughs> at least by moving it back and having. Well, if this is a 12-foot sanitary easement, maybe that will work. I, I sketched this in as a 10-foot area, but having a 10-foot area where you could put some trees and some landscaping and stuff, you could soften up that green vinyl slat stuff. Because when they built, they were pouring a lot of concrete, built this whole fence. Right now, it would probably be quite expensive to come back and try to just put a few sections of that fence in. And I'm not saying money should control, but I'm saying it's one suggestion. If we can do that. If the fencing's way back along here and in here, then the planting's in here and out by this a little bit nicer wall could soften that side. And we could probably soften it towards there. I'm, I'm not sure about having no slats anywhere. We've never done that because what we've always required, and it's in our, our zoning ordinance, I think somewhere is screened storage yards and we love storage yards. And is there a possibility instead of doing slots through everything? Um, doing like a partial slot or every there's like some said, fence types. Our biggest issues is on that one west wall and when the winds do come across I mean they come pretty quick on there and we're already noticing some of them you know are having issues where it's bending I would, I would suggest it was put in without taking the wind load into effect there's a lot of different types of fencing mm -hmm. and if they put in a standard eight-foot fence and didn't take into account the slats it, it wouldn't hold mm -hmm. up there's there's different gauge poles and everything okay. they put in if they know it's going to have a wind load but I was going to say there are other ones too there's actually fabric screens that let some wind through okay. that can go on fence and, and there's a lot of different things like that you can do and I, they might I don't know how, what kind of luck you've had with the slats but they might last longer than a slat but but there are a lot of different materials that can give that opacity to a fence uh, so it, look, it sounds to me like we're uh, landscaping agreements with the neighbors uh, we're maintenance agreements with the neighbors, with the fencing, slatting, and the sanitary easement are the primary, the big issues hanging. Yes, is that, did I miss anything? No, for me, the biggest one that is just a complete unknown is that sanitary sewer easement. I, I, I'd like to know why it's there. Right. And if it's something we no longer need, that would be great to know, and that'd be great for the applicant to know. So given the, uh, the volume that we've just discussed of issues that are hanging here, including the sanitary easement, um, do I have a motion on this action or would the committee like to table it to another meeting and have this happen and come back? I think we have to table it. I mean, we can't. We, we could make a lot of conditions about the stuff we talked about. I don't know how we'd structure a condition for that sanitary sewer easement until we know what it is and what it's for. Can they go, can they, is there anything they can work on in the meantime? Well, number one, I, I, I although you, whatever it was, cease and desist or whatever you got, was that what it was? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Um, please don't cease and desist on erosion control. Okay. Because I walk down where the bio basin is going to be, and it's eroding pretty good, and the silt's over the top of the silt fence. And you know, as far as maintaining the integrity of your site, you know, nobody's going to stop okay. you from fixing that. Yeah. Um, as far as the rest of it, you know, I, I think we've given the applicant a pretty good um, look at where we'd be. But in, until you have an approved zoning permit, I, I think that'd be an awful risk on the applicant's part without getting a motion, wouldn't you? 
Yeah, I just, uh, it seems like, like you said, with a sanitary easement, and, and um, in this instance, it seems like there's a number of complicated issues that we might ordinarily say uh, with the approval of staff and recognizing our current staffing scenario. Um, we're, we're not in a position necessarily to have that expertise um, at our disposal. Understood. Um, I, I didn't hear anybody tonight say, take it down, it's got to go. No. So unless I hear that from somebody and we have to talk about that, but it seems like everybody at the table wants to try to come up with a fix for it. Yes. So, so I think we're um, pretty good on that. Right. If you really want a motion, we can craft it, but it's going to have a lot of, but watch out for the sanitary sewer easements in it because we don't know. And right. I, it's hard for us to approve something right. over a sanitary sewer easement without knowing. So do I have a motion? Kathy? Well, I was just going to say, um, with all due respect, we didn't create the dilemma. Mm -hmm. the, the Apple, you know, we're trying to solve it because we don't want to hold you up. But we don't, but we're sort of behind the eight balls. So. Um, I think we have to table it, get the information, because anything else, if we craft it and they go ahead and things don't work out, there's a problem. So we'd be off, what, two weeks? Or is the next meeting in two weeks or a month? September 10th, a month. Okay, is that going to... Yeah. Could, could I suggest there's been a lot of suggestions tonight yeah. um, there's you have some proposed recommendations and conditions it would give you an opportunity to go through those and probably come back and see what you you can propose and we'd probably have a lot less conditions and maybe be ready to go as soon as we could get to the next meeting assuming we agree on everything um, I, I think the solutions we're coming up with are fairly reasonable yeah um, you're just so, it, so I, I it's awkward. To, I move to table. Move to table. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion regarding tabling? The next no meeting? discussion. Okay. No discussion. You, you can't. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you back. Yeah. Next on the agenda is a public hearing on the request by Immaculate Harv Mary IHM for approval of the zoning permit site plans and structural elevations for two story addition to the IHM convent located at 4905 Schofield Street, case number 2016-2018. Please come to the podium. Welcome. Once again, introduce yourself and give us your address, please. My name is Merle Shaneer, and I live at 6723 Winding Way Court in DeForest, Wisconsin. And uh, I am the project designer, and I've, I've had the pleasure to design this with, with the sisters who have uh, raised all the money themselves to, to do this addition. So it's quite ex exciting. I've, I've been involved s since since day one. Anyway, uh, I'd like to use the overhead if I could. Could we put the, I what am I calling it? The image projector? Yeah. Document projector. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm showing my hey, When I grew up, it was an overhead projector. Yeah. Oh, I know I've got 11 by 17 here. It'll be fine. We can zoom in. That's there we go. Good enough. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the proposed addition will be a two-story with basement. It's 1,064 square feet per floor, totaling a uh, grand total of 3,192 square feet. And the addition will, re will replace uh, the existing garage as we, as we see on the screen right now. Thank you. Anyway, uh, I tried on the design to, to 
to maintain the footprint similar to the garage is not to infringe upon any more setbacks or the prop uh, property line. So the addition will be the same distance of 20 feet as the existing garage was from the north property line and two feet behind the, the front of the existing convent. Uh, it will project 10 feet further to the west and uh, and that's that's where we'd be adding the impervious 29 square feet for that portion of the addition. The existing driveway is to remain uh, and uh, we would be adding retaining walls on the site as well to to clean that up and, and uh, you know, and make, make our grades work. Although the grades, I'd like to emphasize that we're trying to maintain the grades exactly the way they are. It's not to interrupt any, you know, any drainage. Uh, anyway, this is the, this is a perspective. Uh, this is perspective of the, of the new addition. And, uh, See, we we are going to we will be matching as many existing materials as possible. Uh, I wasn't 100 percent sure how in depth you wanted to get with this, so uh, you know I'm going to keep going here. But uh, let's see. I'm addicted to that now. And uh, the basement will have four craft rooms and will connect. We're going to cut a hole and connect it through to the existing laundry. First floor, the, the, the main thing we want to achieve on the first floor is to provide accessibility to the convent, which it lacks currently. So we have two accessible bedrooms, an accessible bathroom, and then a kitchenette that will be accessible, 34-inch counters, and anything that's required by ADA. And uh, let's see, and lastly, on the third floor, uh, I think we're up to adding, or the second floor, I'm sorry. We'll have four new bedrooms and the bathroom as well. Moving on to the exterior, uh, you, did see the, you did see the rendering. Uh, this, this is the black and white, but it, it'll show the other corner. You can see the 10 feet projecting out, out from the south elevation in the rear. And then uh, That, that shows a good shot of the north side, what we're doing there. We'll have windows exposed out of the basement. And then, uh, let's see if I can tune in. And then that's the 10 foot that I was mentioning that projects out to the west. So that, that pretty much uh, covers the extent of our addition. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak about this particular, this is the public hearing, an opportunity for anybody else to come up to the microphone that would like to speak on behalf of the project. My name is Bill Oros and I live at 807 Delwood Circle in Monona. Um, I've been on the periphery involved with this project as a member of the Finance Council at Immaculate Heart of Mary. Um, had not pl planned on being here, just happened to run into the sisters, heard about the meeting, and so I thought I'd somewhat informally um, just let you know what a, what a gift it is to have them be part of our community in general. It's a, it's a pretty unique thing to have a growing member um, group of sisters and so to not only have a building that we had really had trouble keeping full in the past now actually kind of busting at the seams it's a wonderful thing and i would just say that as a somebody has lived in monona for a very long time and been very involved in immaculate mary uh, very much in favor of what all this brings 
and I would just uh, also stress that it's you know that the purpose of the entire property the campus is for religious purposes and this certainly fits that and um, my own personal preferences for architecture is to try and keep things uh, similar to existing similar to comments that you've made here and what I've seen so far they're doing a really good job of meeting both those needs um, the, the highest and best use for religious purposes uh, for the sisters use and really something that's that's going to look nice as well as fit in with exactly what's there whatever that's worth thank you anyone else so I'm sister Mary Thomas at 4905 Schofield Street and um, sister Mary Alex and I were part of the first group to arrive in Monona uh, just three years ago now almost to the date and we've enjoyed so much living in Monona and we have a special uh, we're both present at Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish and we're also a presence of prayer and, and support at the uh, St. Paul's Catholic Center on UW Madison campus so we have a lot of the college students coming out to our convent for retreats on the weekends which is why we first felt the need to expand and have more guest areas so that's why we conceived of this project and got a lot of support within one year we're able to raise what we, we had to raise and so we're very excited to be here tonight hopefully we'll get the approval we need thank you thank you Terrific. If there is no one else that would like to come up, uh, we will close the public hearing and move to consideration of action. So uh, F is consideration of action on the request by Immaculate Heart of Mary, IHM, for approval of zoning permit site plans and structural elevations for two-story addition to the IHM convent located at 4905 Schofield Street, case number 2016-2018. <coughs> the property is zoned single family. Um, the religious use there is a conditional use. Any modifications or substantial construction requires planned commission approval. Um, approval is recommended with the two conditions. And I just had a, an additional question about the use of the space and the parking. Um, there are new bedrooms going in, so an um, expected increase in people of number of people number of people that are living there. But the letter of application explains that. There are only two cars utilized by everyone that lives in the building. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then you're removing the existing garage? Uh, yes. So is the plan just to have vehicle parking in the driveway space that remains? Correct. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, we'll open it to the committee. Chris? Well, first, thank you for bringing something so non-controversial here tonight. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is this is fun, it's actually. A, actually I'm, I'm impressed with uh, the meeting myself. <laughs> um, I like the fact that you're matching the architecture, all the brick, everything about it. It looks like it fits from your rendering. It looks it'll look like it's been, it'll actually more be more attractive than the garage. I think. Old-fashioned architect. Um, <laughs> my, my biggest comment would be, I know it's a small land disturbance, you need to watch your erosion control, because as you know, the back corner of the garage is already eroding onto the neighbor's property where it's washing out on you. Yep. And now I was hoping you could use that foundation, but you're extending further back to the west. That's what I hope to achieve with that retaining wall. I see yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, the water's washing parallel to the re retaining wall, so I'm not sure it'll do a lot of good yeah. for you. But uh, uh, during construction afterwards, you're, you're going to need to spend special attention to the washing there because you've got a really steep bank off that north face. Sure. And you know that. So you're going, what, four feet into the ground, four foot out, or something like that? Uh, actually, we have three foot exposure yeah. right so, now. So you'll be so four or five feet in the ground? That's pretty much what we have right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And you don't have it now. You're well, parking on it. It's garage. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. I was speaking towards the north. There, sure. So. Sure. So when you have the hole there, it'll be fine. But once you backfill, just try to try to get that exterior fixed up. Love the brick you're putting on there, but the masons need to scaffold it and get up there, and that's going to be a problem. That'll be your hardest thing to do. So, again, my biggest caution would be to watch the erosion control in that one corner. And I do have a question: Is when you're putting your um, elevations up there, you can see them really well. What'd you do to your paper that's different? <laughs> well, I, I it's your paper. You printed them. Why did those show up so well? Did yeah, you, did anybody else notice that? That the glare was gone? Uh, 
Maybe this weren't I'll wrinkled. Find out what they paper, hadn't been wrinkled and bent, so anyhow. We used at the office. Well done on that. I thought after the last uh, session, too, they'd be all wrinkled. And yeah. So I, I see no issues. I think it's a totally appropriate use. I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm thrilled that the parish is growing and things are successful. And I, I like the fact that you bring young people into Monona and they can see it and be around. I, I think it's great to be, bring more people in here. Perfect. Kathy? No, I like the project. Glad you're here. I haven't heard anything about any wild parties. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's a great use of them. And right. growing is good, particularly yeah. with, with nuns. We need you around for influence. I had a clarifying question regarding the retaining wall on the um, rendering street perspective. It appears to be coming straight out at me and straight back, but then on the other drawings it shows it going to the north. Uh, and yes, it'll, it'll go to the north further than the perspective. In fact, the perspective should have been updated before prior to the meeting. So they're, so they're going in line with the front and the back of the building? Uh, yeah, more of an angle than, than what's shown on the front perspective to catch the grades more. So then, so uh, what's in the second? S101 has them going straight out at the 90 degree. The perspective has it relatively going 90 degrees opposite of what's listed there. Yeah, and they will be, I'll, I'll fix that so long. Somewhere in between. Yeah, they'll be in between, okay. probably 45 degrees. Whatever works out best for the, the grades. And then what's the height from the exposure of the window to the top of the highest point of that retaining wall? Uh, let's see. Section with me. Well, we're we're shooting for three feet from the well, not from the highest part of the window. You see, the windows are the feet. concern three that feet. I would have it's is twelve inches. Foot traffic. Twelve inches is the tallest. Yeah. Between the the height of the retaining wall. Yes. From the, you asked the top of the window to the top of the retaining wall? Uh, nope, the ground below. So basically, how oh. high up are we, if I'm on the top oh, oh. of the retaining wall? Yes, how, down to the grade. How far am I going to fall? By code, <laughs> I have to go 30 inches, otherwise I need a railing on top of the wall. So that's my goal. That was the question. Okay. Yeah, we don't want anybody to fall over. Perfect, thank you. So as long as that's figured out, it looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't have any questions. I think it looks great also. Thanks. Okay. I think it's fine. I think it's an appropriate use. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Yes, Chris. I just want to say it's good pickup by Brian. I agree with him. The more you get those walls going east-west versus yeah. north-south, it'll actually do some good for you. We'll work on that uh, quite And then by exposing okay. that side, it'll actually help the grade towards the neighborhood yeah. of the north. It'll make it better. Yeah, because there's we there's the issue there now, like you were saying with washout, and yes. that, that needs to be fixed. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So move, move approval with staff conditions. Second. Do I have a second. I have a second from Griff. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Good luck. Mission Thank carries. You. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Next up is consideration of action on a request by DSI Real Estate Group, Inc. for approval of an amendment to a comprehensive signage plan for the River Place development, including buildings at 500, 600, and 700 River Place, case number S0182018. This <laughs> 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 We saved the best to last. <laughs> Again, state your name and address, please. Certainly. Dan Brinkman. I'm from DSI Real Estate Group. We're at 100 River Place. Um, it's been quite a while since I've been here, but it's good to see some familiar faces still here. I don't think this is controversial either, but let's <laughs> keep our fingers crossed. <clears throat> Just asking to uh, allow um, our sign packages in those three buildings to allow color. And when we first put them in place, it was all uh, to be uniformly red, and we're finding now in today's marketplace that businesses really want their logo colors, and uh, it's uh, getting to be a bit of a hindrance for our leasing to not be able to have colors. So that's the only change we're asking for. Okay. 
Thank you. Question. Sonia? And just the staff report, this is consistent with other comprehensive signage plans that we've revisited in recent years. I noted that um, similar revisions were completed for Pier 37, the South Town Mall buildings, and Crawford's Landing. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Chris? Well, I, I was here when we did it, <laughs> and you've made many trips since then, and I was pretty bought into the fact that we got to be consistent. We have to have everything the same, and I kind of agree with you now. I think a little individuality on a sign is refreshing on a building, and so I think you've got a good sign code. I like the individual letters and everything else about it, so I had absolutely zero issue with the uh, color. I have no issue. But it's good to see you again. <laughs> good to see you, too. Ryan? Shortly. No issues. I think it's great to be here proactively. Thank you. Yeah, I think it. I think it makes sense. Thanks. I think we've already abandoned the old standards. So <laughs> I have no problem. Can I just ask? Are the returns on the letters all the same color? The depth of the channel letters. Um, I think the way we wrote it, uh, the modifications of it, that would be open to have different colors as well. That's different colors. Okay. Terrific. Do I have a motion on this? Consideration? We're looking at that end to make a motion this time. Oh, okay. Move approval. <laughs> uh, do I have a second? Second. Second from Susan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Item number H is approval of the 2019 Planning Department operating budget. I just wanted to sneak this into the packet real quick <laughs> before I leave. Um, it's, Move approval. Yeah, it's the same as every year. Um, the, the things that we're carrying over, professional development not changed from 2800, staying 2800. Landmarks Commission supplies 700 to 700. Um, sorry, that was regular supplies. Landmarks Commission supplies 200 to 200. So that would be the, the department recommendation moving forward. Move approval. Sec I second. Oh, let's did you have, were you gonna ask right. a question? I have a question, but I can yeah, do it yeah. after the second. Well, it should be after the second. Yeah. That's, what I was That's why I jumped in. Right. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Brian, you have a question? Yeah, so the first one has to do with the 2800 on uh, professional development. Mm -hmm. And I know this is, a, this is an important piece in earlier, a few years back. It really didn't exist, or it was a very minimal number. And I think it was very beneficial to have funding associated for this department. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, given that we, from my understanding, um, we're looking at uh, an outside agency to fill in the interim until a new city administrator comes on to mm -hmm. look at who's got what type of background. Mm -hmm. And if that's the, the case, I'm fine holding that number unless, unless we end up going down the path of hiring in that role that would need additional professional development funds, and I'd want that to at least be somehow captured in the notes. Okay. So that way, if it, got, if it does go that direction that they invest in whoever ends up in that role. Secondly, it has to do with the outside services, so I assume this 15,000 is to cover contracted services? That was from last year's budget, and that covered the sign code update. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. All right, that's it for me. Chris. Question. Uh, it's, I, I agree we need professional development, but none of that's carried through. The supplies is not carried through into the 2019 budget. It's been left off. Right. It sh I think it should be included. Yeah. If um, we're looking at this, can we put the, uh, yeah. what I call the overhead projector back on, please? <laughs> <laughs> So this is this year's budget, so we don't have any of these items included right now, and I, I agree with Brian, they ought to be in there, maybe it'll be a little more, but certainly professional development supplies, landmark commission, and I don't know about this community development, there's nothing other, but these mm -hmm. three for sure, should they not be in the budget we're approving? You're correct, and verbally that was my intent that I just summarized as carrying over that 2800, the 700, and the 200. I just didn't get it done. Okay, is this, this but that's package. what confused me, it's not on yep, the sheet yeah. we have. Yep. So in okay. that column you have circled as my recommendation. If and you agree, it goes to the last column. We know we're going to have some consulting fees. 
do we need to include part of this, at least request that for our budget and let the council hash it out? But we should probably have some placeholder in there. We know we're not going to have a planner on board right away. We're going to get an administrator, then, then we'll get a planner, which means we'll have outside consultants likely for a while. I, I think we should show some placeholder for that. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, those on the council and finance can hash out what that should be, but at least for budgeting, it seems to me we should budget something. We know something's going to happen. I don't know what that number is. Maybe those that are on the council or used to be on the council would have a good idea. And my guess is they're going to take some of the salary that is not being spent in this area and use that for the the, the fees to augment. But maybe we all know that maybe it'll cost more. <laughs> we all know that it's going to cost more. Yes, to buy the service than to have the employee. So, okay. well, and I would also argue that it's likely to cost more salary-wise. I mean, there, uh, perhaps it's just it's just to say that that it's uh, how many years have you been? Seven years, and you know I know that we've you know rewarded you handsomely, but the but the reality, but not nearly as much as you're worth, mind you. But um, mm -hmm. but uh, but the reality is is that you know the the salary ranges in the outside world usually increase faster than um, the incremental increases that happen internally, um, and so the likelihood of the salary. Mm -hmm. Given the demands on the position and given what we would be looking for, I would say that it's like unlikely that the, s the salary would even remain the same. I, I mean, I know, and I know that just as it relates to the city administrator's position, that, that there was just re research done, you know, by the department to look at the salary because we're hiring there first, um, and I'm, I'm assuming they'll do the exact same research for this position, but I think it's unlikely that it would remain the same. Um, so would it make sense to keep some placeholder under that um, outside services? One or the other. Yeah. 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 Where it goes, I don't know which one it comes from, but I, I would suspect something should be in there. Mm -hmm. At a committee level, I would propose that we put 20000 That's the number there. I had in mind and keep the salary the same because they'll adjust the salary right. based on the offer. Yep. But yeah. at least it gives the message to the council and yep. for you guys to say, yeah. hey, yes. this is what our discussion was. It's going to cost something. Yeah. yeah. So that go to sense. the 20,000 on the outside services and then put back in the, the professional development supplies and, mm -hmm. and all those other line items. Right. So changes. Do I have a move to approve of those? You issues? have that. You have to get them to agree. Oh, to I'm what sorry. Yeah, we move to amend to or move to those amend. items. I'm sorry. I forgot that we had already moved. To, yeah. Do I have with those additions? Do I have? Approved? Sure, it's fine. Yeah, I'm fine. All those in favor with those additions? Aye. 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 We're approved. <coughs> Reports of staff and commission members. Staff report regarding the status of development project proposals. I can't even remember when we met. I think it was just last Monday or Tuesday. Um, as the small sign code subcommittee, we hashed through the draft tables and the sign code for two and a half hours, I think. Yeah, we did a lot. Um, good discussion, and I think Vandewal and Sierra took notes as far as um, points that we wanted to call out for discussion by the larger group, and now Vandewal is finalizing that draft, and then it will come here before the commission whenever it can be scheduled. So I have nothing else as far as detail to add. Could I just add one thing to it? Mm -hmm. we, we actually asked for some of the items to be highlighted because this is a review because of the Supreme Court ruling, but it's also an update to our ordinance. So right. some of the things that were on our ordinance we felt we should be updated and, and modernized. And so what we're asking them to do, Vandewall, when he put it together and he agreed, is he's going to highlight a lot of those items. For example, flagpoles could only be 25 foot tall. We, we have a recommended change to that. And you could only have a four by six flag and you couldn't fly a Packer flag or a Badger flag or, or a corporate flag. And so we made some recommendations that we felt were more up with what we see happening than just what was in the old sign code. So those are the highlighting those things that actually are that was directly our impacted in the, the ordinance? Changes. Right. Yeah. The changes of the ordinance. 
it's all changed. That, that's directly yeah. connected to the. To yes. The, okay. It's all changed, but the, yeah. the ones that are more yes. policy. The one yeah. right. <clears throat> because a lot of it's still crafted off our own old sign code when they yes. were in the base, and yes. so some of the things we've modified a few times. Right. Okay. Great. Sounds like a very productive oh. meeting. <laughs> Meetings. Yes. Um, number two, just a reminder, I sent out an email today confirming those of you that are registered for the Center for Land Use Education trainings. If you still decide you want to register for any of those, you can do that up until the day of. Um, just let Sierra know. Um, upcoming meeting, September 10th, you will have Monona Lutheran ground sign, the church that's across from the high school. They want a new landscape ground sign, so that'll be here. I saw the plans today. It looks like it meets all of the standards in the code. And then feral equipment and supply, and um, I'll have notes drafted up as far as the, the conditions that we were looking for, um, for Sierra or the um, interim consultant that will be staffing the plan commission. So. Who's going to be sitting in your chair? We're still talking with a few different people. There are three consultants that have offered to assist, and um, they're trying to figure out details right now. Who's the search team? Uh, Mark Hotaker and Leah Kimmel. Now either one with planning experience. Right. Could I suggest to the chair that we get some planning experience on a search team? Uh, and and absolutely. search team as far as input on the interim consultant or on? Both. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, I will speak with, didn't uh, realize that the search team had been put together. Oh, the two that you're mentioning are, is for the interim? Yeah, I mean, okay. that's not really a search team. They're okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will definitely speak uh, to the, um, I will not be here on September 10th, so I should check with Chad, see if he's in, in fact going to be here, I'm out on business. Uh, any other commission requests for information from our esteemed staff member? Yes. I don't even know where to start, but um, it's been a lot of fun having you here for, has it been seven years as a planner or does that include your internship? Five years as full-time planner. Five, five, five <coughs> thoughts. So to see you start out and, you know, just an open book and where you've come and you have so much more potential yet, it's just, it's, it's a loss, but I'm really happy for you. And we, if anybody wants to know, we were planning on going out and having a cocktail or something after this just mm -hmm. to uh, celebrate her new position and all she's meant to Monona. We really appreciated you, your service and we really appreciate getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot, especially coming from you. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate um, all of your time. It's been fun for me as well. So. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more, even though I'm the newbie uh, around here, uh, you know. Um, it's very obvious to me, uh, you know, the wealth of knowledge and expertise and calm um, and dedication, all of which um, are critical. So um, we thank you. Uh, anything else? I just want to agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure yeah. working with you and good luck th in your future career. Thank <laughs> you. Great. Terrific. With that, do we have a move to adjourn? Move adjournment. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.